Game development is hard. Game dev is hard. These are some of the videos I watched when I wanted to start making games. And for a 13 year old, being told that you need to learn scripting and modeling and make good graphics and pay for advertising, well, I was a little overwhelmed. So I put the idea in the back of my mind for a few years because I didn't feel ready for the challenge. But what if I told you there were a few secret tools that helped me make three games from scratch and I didn't even write a single line of code? Game development is considered one of the hardest jobs in the world. Every year, millions of people come up with an amazing game idea and get to work. But after a few months or even years, they give up. But why is this? Well, your brain likes to make things look easy when they're not. When you think of a cool idea for your game, you often don't consider all the factors that make your idea possible. Game dev can be especially difficult as an indie game dev because you need to do the programming, music, art, sound effects, and more all on your own. Juggling this many skills at once can dramatically slow down your progress in producing your dream game. But there has to be an easier way around it, right? Well yes, sort of. Before we make any games, we need to pick a game engine which is basically where all of the development takes place. There are many great options such as Unity, which Pokemon Go was made with, and Unreal Engine, which Fortnite was made with. Although these are great game engines that can produce great games, these aren't ideal options because they take skill, and skill is bad because we are lazy. If you really want to make a full game with no prior knowledge, then I recommend using Roblox Studio. And I I know what some of you might be thinking. Wait, that's a kid's game. But Roblox isn't just the old blocky game that you remember. Take this game that looks similar to Call of Duty, for example. Roblox Studio is a great place for beginners because Roblox uses Lua, which is a very simple coding language, and the layout of the workspace itself is very digestible compared to other game engines. Not to mention that Roblox takes care of the publishing, servers, databases, multiplayer, monetization, basically all of the hard things. After opening Roblox Studio, you are greeted by a page where you can pick which template to start creating on. You can choose a blank base plate, but Roblox also offers complete games like this game called Line Runner, where you collect coins and jump over zombies. But for the sake of this video, we will be using a base plate to make a game from scratch. So now that we have this base plate open, we need to enable one of the newest features called Roblox Generative AI. If you want to enable this yourself, go to File, and then Beta Features, and you're going to want to check the box called AI Powered Code Completion. Next to the checkbox, there is a brief description of the AI. And as you can see, it looks at the existing script, and the AI will generate a suggestion based on any comments you make. So in our first script, if we make a comment asking to make a new part each second, the AI will generate code that does what we asked. The script even added in the size of the part in a random position. To apply the suggestion, just press the tab key. Now when we test our game, a new part is generated each second in a different spot each time. Next I asked the AI to generate a random color for each part, and I changed the increment to 10 times a second instead of once. And I'm not gonna lie, this is kind of fun to watch. This was the first time that I used generative AI, and I was absolutely shocked with how well it works. After getting a good feeling for the AI, it's time to try and make a game without writing a single line of code. So my idea for the game is you'll be in a box, and parts will be dropped from a random location, and then if one of the parts hits you, then you will die. First I added some more scripts to the part to increase the transparency, and make it so that the part kills the player. I also set it so that the size is always 5, and the color of the part will be red. When testing the game, there is no surprise that the AI did everything I requested, and a red part is spawned each second. Next I added this simple map so that you couldn't just run away from where the parts were spawning. There's no point system or anything, but I think you get the idea of what's possible with the Roblox AI. Now let me show you another feature that makes creating games even easier. For my next game, we're going to open up a new fresh base plate. For this feature, you're going to want to click on the view tab, and then find the toolbox option. This should open a menu on your screen with a bunch of models. The toolbox is a place where you can take models, sounds, animations, scripts, and plugins that other people have created and uploaded for others to use. Now let me show you how easy it is to use the toolbox. Let's say I want to make a speed game where you get faster over time. In the toolbox, I can just search for a speed simulator kit and drag it into the workspace. Most of these models include instructions on where to place all of the different parts or ways to customize the script. As you can see, this one model from the toolbox includes multiple complex scripts and an entire map for the game. After two minutes of developing, we are ready to test our game. And as you can see, the game actually works. You start off as a slow runner, but you get faster by running and collect speed orbs. But we obviously need to make the game somewhat original, so I built an original map using the toolbox, and now we have this nice park with a few city buildings off to the side. Now we have a complete game, but we won't make any robux from this, which is bad because... I like money! So to monetize the game, I searched for a donation board from the toolbox, and after making a few dev products, we have a working donation board for 
people to give us Robux for the massive amount of effort we put into this game. The only thing wrong about this game is it's kind of boring. So let's make a less boring game with the toolbox. There seems to be one type of game that everyone finds entertaining, and that is shooting games. So I decided that I would make a game where you'd kill as many zombies as possible. First I searched for a working gun pack in the toolbox, and I found this gun that I like. When testing the game, everything works fine, and there's even sounds for the shooting and reloading. But we don't have anything to shoot at, so I searched for a zombie spawner and it wasn't exactly working. Who would have thought that errors could occur by using the toolbox? I eventually figured out that when you equip the gun, it was messing up the target that the zombies were running towards, and I found this other gun that worked better. Now I can run around and shoot at the zombies until they catch me and I die. Finally, I found a simple map from the toolbox that I felt fit the vibe of a zombie apocalypse. And now when we test the game, we have a complete zombie wave game with a working shooting system and a functional zombie respawn system. So in this video we were able to make three separate games that are all fully functional without any scripting or modeling needed. Now obviously if you're wanting to make high quality games then you should probably learn some of the basic skills but if you're just wanting to make a fun game to play with your friends for a day then go right ahead and use these tools. I'm excited to see how much AI improves in the future and makes the development process even easier. If you want to play any of the games that I made in this video then click the links in the description. And while you're down there also make sure to subscribe because we're trying to hit 2k by the end of the month. I hope you all enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one.